inclusive uh, national development because the theme of today's uh, on Congress or this week's Congress is science and technology for national development. So that way I chose that one. So that's our uh, campus. I start uh, by showing you uh, this uh, slide, uh, a cover page of a book called Design for the Other 90%. Okay? It was published in the USA and the, the, the highlights of this book is put on the right hand side that 90% of the population in the world live below poverty level. Okay? But unfortunately, or whatever way you say it, 90% of the designers you know, work for the 10% of, if you use the word rich, or uh, the multinational companies who are rich actually, right? Uh, but design for the 90% requires not a low tech, you know. Many times I get this impression from many of my colleagues and students, are yaar kya hai, that's root tag, no? Kuch jugar laga do, it's done, right? So, uh, but actually, if you want to get into it, then you will realize that it is not that just kuch laga do and this jugar will work. In fact, jugar, if you talk in terms of Professor Anil Gupta's uh, views, jugar is not a bad word, rather it's a very innovative you know, word for our you know, people, grassroots people. You know. So design for other 90% requires high-tech solutions but with a low cost. Most of the so-called high-tech high solutions which we use in robotics, they do not talk about the cost part at all. Now ISRO, I have stories from ISRO, probably a small bolt you know, has been wrongly designed. You know. It costs maybe 100 rupees, you know. few crores just burn down immediately in seconds. Okay. So the theme of this paper is, the uh, theme of this presentation is to share with you, right, how you know, this inclusiveness, the 90% of the people can be included in our development. Well, now uh, there are two more items I wanted to share with you. Uh, one is very alarming for our country, is unemployability in India. No? Uh, this is a study, a study more than 150,000 engineering students who graduate in 2015, the very latest story, from about 650 colleges, we have about 10,000 engineering colleges, okay. 80% of them are unemployable. In fact, last weekend I was reading the Hindu, uh, the Education Plus page, supplementary page, where Shiv Khera, who is one of the popular you know, author for the bestseller book called You Can Win, he has given an interview and in the interview he also pointed out it's 90%, it's not 80%, whatever it is, no. 80% is not also a very uh, good figure. So the question is, this 10,000 and 10 lakhs engineering students who graduate, I'm not counting other because I'm from engineering background, so I have some information, no? So how do we make them useful for the society, no? If they're unemployable, does not mean job is not there. In fact, immediately with me, I have two, three jobs because IITs, we do projects and we can hire project people, no? So this is one very winding situation for the country. Then comes to education, right? Because when you talk about unemployability, why un unemployability happens? No, it might be that okay, maybe the education which is being imparted was not very appropriate. Okay, so then what is the true education in that case, right? So there I look for some of our philosophers, you know, uh, scientists, of course. So I come back to our Indian philosopher, you know, Swami Vivekananda, in his book My India, the Eternal, the India Eternal. He writes, quote, start, uh, the education which does not help the common mass of people to equip themselves for the struggle for life, which does not bring, bring out strength of character, is it what? Well, that is a similar uh, statement would be there in Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography also, if you read that thing. So the question is, inclusiveness is not there. We have unemployability, right? And our education is probably as not as we want it to be because of which unemployability happens, because of which inclusiveness is not there, right? So to handle this situation, I thought, you know, of certain solution in my style, which I will share with you today in next 15, 20 minutes. So my objective in research and teaching is in such a way so that skill to solve life problems. So that I have put it in the phrase at the bottom, skill to solve life problem, right? Two weeks, three weeks ago, you know, I was uh, in the institute of uh, uh, the speaker today, Dr. Bhavani Rao, you know, Amrita uh, University. 
And there, you know, uh, this emphasis is there, you know, along with professional learning, we should have life learning as well. Okay, now, so go back a little bit uh, at IIT Delhi. You know, I wanted to share some of the so-called high-tech uh, research we do. And the later part, I will share with you that how we convert some of these high-tech uh, technologies or some of the concepts of the technologies you know, to solve some of the rural problems. So this is a work, we call it Program for Autonomous Robotics Laboratory. It is a sponsored project from uh, Baba Atomic Research Centers. Uh, just ended 2016, uh, it was for about six years. So first one, the objective was to how to uh, think of uh, robotized assembly of, you know, uh, a, say a pellets uh, inserted into the hole. So when some of the uh, robots which are at the remote places, you know, they have to be handled remotely. So here is a, a demonstration of uh, a robot, a real robot here, industrial robot. Uh, in this case, KUKA KR5, a German uh, robot. So it is uh, picking up one of the objects and placing on the top of another object. So here, not the assembly, but uh, stacking is happening. You know? So this is a, a project by three departments, mechanical, computer science, and electrical engineering department. And this contribution came from computer science uh, professors and students. So here you see, this is a virtual world, basically CAD file of the robots here. And uh, during uh, its operations, our computer science uh, scientists have uh, developed some algorithm that they can control it by taking the feedback from the real robot that how much rotations are happening in each of the motion, just like my hand motions here, okay? And so operator just sees this part. Operator does not see this part at all, no? But uh, he can control this uh, quite correctly. That means he can pick up an object of about 14 millimeter diameter and he can place uh, the top of another 14 millimeter diameter fairly accurately. We'll just see, I'll just do the first forward for the sake of time saving. So it is approaching to uh, place on the top of uh, the other one. And this is the, the close view of uh, the, the, the robot here. And okay, so just to release the, huh. so success, okay. So that way in this video, there is a few more minutes are there. Uh, for the sake of time, again, I'll uh, stop it here because I, what I want to tell you, the remote operation of a robot is run. Uh, now, as I said, how we can integrate uh, such technology. So here is uh, uh, another uh, example why, how we can take interface technology in computer science to education. So here I have uh, a device which we call it Saksha. If you go YouTube videos, it will be there. I hope the sound comes here. Okay. So it's an interactive device. What it has is, it has the pictures of, of uh, uh, say, alphabet, you know, say, find A for apple, and I have four pictures. If you touch uh, apple pictures correctly, then you get a point, okay? If you uh, touch another one, you do not get a point, you get a chance, you know, uh, repeatedly, maybe about 10 times before it will say, sorry, you know, uh, restart again, you know? So we have uh, this uh, A to Z, and then we have Hindi also, and we have started a little bit of math. Uh, this is a collaborative project with uh, one of my Japanese colleagues. You now I worked in Japan about 15 years ago, and uh, one of my colleagues have become a professor now. So he does it for physiotherapy purposes. You know? uh, imagine there is a game which shows the river, a river and a fish is flowing there. So as you touch, uh, catch the fishes, right, and you get a point, so you get a hand exercise and put the same uh, device on, on a mobile robot and you work. So you, get, you get leg exercise, right? So uh, he wanted to do some collaborative project with India. So I thought uh, that physiotherapy, I am not working with medical doctors, but I have a lot of interest in education. So we developed the software part by ourselves. And now this has a device uh, here, which is 80,000 rupees. Now we are replacing this one with a relatively economic device called the Kinect sensor, which is about 15,000. So we have tested this in our uh, central school uh, primary uh, level, and they are very happy, and we are looking for partners to work to take it forward, particularly for the village level schools where 
even teachers do not feel motivated uh, to come to the schools, the government level schools particularly, okay. So that was some activity about uh, the robotics laboratory which started in 2010. Before that, we uh, started working on mechatronics. As you, many of you may know, mechatronics is a combination of mechanical, electrical, electronics. The word is mechatronics, mecha, nickel, uh, mecha from mechanical and tronics from electronics or mechatronics. It's the amalgamation of mechanical, electrical, computer science, IT, you know, all the stuff. So I'll just to uh, show you two videos here, uh, which we have done it for Indian Army uh, in uh, Secretariat. They have a simulated development. <laughs> So what you see uh, here is just a treadmill you use it for exercise. Now we put a, a photo at the bottom and a screen on the top here and a sensor on the waist. So it used as a walking simulator. The Indian Army uh, does not want to send all its ones to all these remote places. So they would like to have some training. Uh, it was for them, but it can be used for uh, you know, sports exercises, right? And we can think of physiotherapy purposes, sports. But at this moment, it was for a uh, Indian Army. So we have sent this device uh, to them in Second Raba for further uh, use. So that was for the Army Joans. What about for the, uh, the trucks and cars? So we developed this one. So, what important was our position? Software, the front software they had already uh, from some other vendor, and this chassis comes ready made. So, the idea is as the driver is pushing the accelerator, no, it is showing uh, different parts, uh, different road condition, and then the feeling of road uh, tilting and everything should come just like a flight simulator. And uh, just I uh, saw in the uh, uh, the Lee the Airport left yesterday, left that left they put one of the flight simulator for the public the left side, yeah. so you can go and have fun. Okay, so now that was part of the technology development part. The education part, as I was introduced, that uh, this is uh, uh, the book uh, uh, I have written for our students, mainly to give prides to our students because mostly we follow uh, foreign books, right? So we think knowledge remains there. And at our earliest opportunity, no, we try to land up there. No, so when I uh, started my career here in '96, no, I thought uh, of doing something. In the meantime, the IGNO, Indira Gandhi National Open University, approached me uh, to write a uh, course contents, and which finally boiled down to this book. And the book, uh, along with this book, so the two things we try to uh, uh, address: uh, one is how to understand some of the concepts which are not so easy to understand. So we developed this software which is freely downloadable from this website roboanalyzer.com. So the robot which you have seen in our laboratory video, say which is called KUKA KR5. So if I take KUKA KR5 robot and I can upload it in my software which is preloaded. So you can see and you want to study some analysis. In this case, for those who may know, know uh, forward kinematics, it's not that you have to understand. And you want to see how it moves, okay. So even sitting in the comfort of your uh, hostel, right, uh, you may try to understand the basic phenomena of uh, uh, the robotic devices. In this case, the serial robots which are used in the industries. Then uh, in order to have a hands-on experience, that unemployability I was talking about, right, unless you have a hands-on experience, I think it is very difficult to become a good engineer. So for that, we encourage our students to take part in different competitions, okay. And one of these robots from the competition has been converted to very soon to be product. I have a strong belief it can be a product very soon. And this can be used uh, in a security uh, vi vigilance purposes uh, in a closed door environment. Uh, in this case, it's a student activity center. And it is show he is showing the obstacle avoidance you know, uh, as he comes in the front. And if it is a face, that means if it's a human being, it will say that please move away, give me the way. And if it is uh, some other inanimate object, you know, it does know what to do, uh, it cannot recognize. So it hands over the control to the operator, and then operator controls it, right? So we are testing uh, for its reliability, robustness, stuff like that. Uh, once we are happy with this, you know, probably we'll deploy uh, to our security office first. Then it can be taken to the shopping malls. You now it can act as a uh, guide robot for the, the visitors there. 
And this kind of experiences actually uh, give uh, a lot of uh, experiences uh, working with the hardware. Talking about other Indian robots, you know, uh, generally in India we have a uh, feeling that uh, we cannot uh, develop uh, robots in India, so always we look forward to the foreign companies, foreign organization. But the issue is we do not talk much about it, probably it is in our culture that we do not want to advertise much, right? So I thought it is necessary that we share, even if we do not advertise, but we must share. So here I am sharing some of the robots uh, which are making news. Uh, this is a Daksh robot by DRDO Pune. Uh, it is used for bomb disposal and India Army gave 200 uh, such orders uh, and three companies have been uh, know, assigned to fabricate the technology transfer. This is another one, the Netra, all of you have seen in Three Idiots, you know, uh, the, the robot which sees the suicide guy. You know. So that has been converted by the uh, IIT Bombay students uh, called Netra. It was used in uh, Uttarakhand disaster uh, management time. This is a robot by Tata Automation Limited, should be commercially available uh, uh, in the market. This is Milaglo, uh, floor cleaning robot with water also, uh, it's a Gurgaon based company. This is MTAB, a Chennai based company uh, uh, making uh, educational robots. Uh, this is System and Tricks uh, India Limited in Bangalore, uh, they are making a uh, industrial robot which moves very fast. Uh, in the R&D domain, uh, this is underwater, autonomous underwater robotics by CMRI, ACSRI laboratory, and this we have, I have just shown you, no Indian Army. So in IEEE uh, Robotics and Automation magazine, uh, we have written a small article, two-page article in 2013. So for those who might be interested to do more about such information, what are the things happening, so you can just uh, glance through this article. Okay, so now the answers. So next two, three minutes. Uh, what I have now, no, I will uh, give this answer uh, to those uh, challenges actually, right. So one I consider the innovative teaching, uh, the ROGB, Robotics Computation Knowledge Based Education Engineering. What it is, just to give you an example, suppose we, not suppose, we have a robotic competition every year held in Pune for last 10 years now. So it's called Robocon. So, we, we send our students to take part in this competition. This game which you are watching is a badminton playing robots. Okay? And it's a, uh, uh, the game, three minutes game between IIT Delhi and another COET uh, in Pune. And so as you see, the, the students have to build these robots uh, to play badminton. Right? And typically about seven to eight months are available to design, develop, as I have written it here, uh, involves conceptualization. What should be the design, right? Design, of course, the mechanical design, electrical design, uh, programming design, fabrication, debugging. Then, of course, a strategy to win. We all know coconut water is the best drink amongst many other carbonated drinks available. But still, can we say that uh, coconut water sells more than Coca-Cola or Pepsi, for example, right? So it's not the technology all the time. It is also the marketing and in this case, a strategy to win, okay? So, this is very important. Uh, a similar example could be Windows versus Linux, for example, right? Or uh, earlier it was uh, Unix. So it's like a mini industry for me. So when they get trained, they get industry ready. And fun group activity while making it. And of course, the joy of creation is there. And they are industry ready. Just to share with you uh, one feedback from one of our ex-students. He is an entrepreneur now. Uh, he runs a company called Things Lab. Uh, uh, India and he has office in Chandigarh and in uh, San Francisco. Uh, so I just write, read the two lines here. Uh, my experience here at Michigan, uh, sorry, sorry, this is a different one I have taken it out. Uh, so I wanted to, oh, I have not taken the other one. Anyway, so this is another guy who studied at Michigan, his master's and now he's working for MathWorks, now who has this MATLAB software. So my experience here at Michigan, how the experience has been, how the robotics club has helped me develop skills that are very useful elsewhere as well. So these experiences are helping even for the higher study. The next part is what I call is mudra, no? multi-body dynamics or rural application. Mudra for me also money, no? it can save money, uh, you, you can earn money. So here what we did is, uh, here you can see a video of a carpet cleaning process, uh, which we worked for Bhadoi uh, in UP, which is called the carpet capital of India. So instead of a manual cleaning, we produced uh, these uh, machines uh, to do the cleaning of the carpets, okay? And 
Interestingly, the same mechanism, the same machines was used by an Italian professor as a working robot, right? The question is not always in that case, you now what we are talking about, the, the basic knowledge is the same, right? The mechanical devices. So here also the students have the joy of creation, satisfaction of helping society. All of us at one point of our life, you now we want to help the society. And also we are creating literature. And here is a small feedback from one of my students uh, who worked for Tata Motors in Pune. Once he got the job, he said, sir, I did not get the job for my robotics project I did with you, but with the loom project, carpet loom project, no? I worked with you. So there is, uh, these things are written here. So going along uh, that direction, I mentioned at the beginning, the RUTAC, Rural Technology Action Group, seven IITs have these centers. Uh, IIT Delhi is one of them. So we have developed several technologies on uh, here. So this is for a finance improvement. This is for the small farmers, bullock driven tractors. This is for uh, 30 feet and above water level, a treadle pump. This is a ship shearing, removing hair from the ship's body. This is to measure water level you know, for the uh, irrigation. This is to create beads from Tulsi Mala. We are in a, in a city where probably lots of malas will be you know, utilized. So I just wanted to show you uh, briefly what used to be earlier in Bharatpur, close to Brindaman. So this is the manual way of, uh, oh, semi-automatic, semi-mechanized uh, way of doing things. One of the critical part was they used to stop this shaft you know, with their fingers, which is running at about 10,000 RPM. What we provided is a switch, simple switch, and the motor did not be carried, it would be just, you know, are supported. Too simple, common sense, with little engineering bent of mind, right, have given their, you know, uh, uh, earning about three times. And as a scientist or as a researcher, we'd like to publish, right, otherwise my director will not give me the promotion, right. So some of these things have been converted to papers also, uh, and that gives the awareness as well. So this is one paper, Women Empowerment by Technology Supported Manufacturing of Beads from Holy Basil, which is Tulsi. It was published in Current Science, uh, which is published in the Indian Academy of Science, okay. So uh, with this, I wanted to share with you, these kind of movements have started all around the world. So USA in Stanford, they have a program called Entrepreneurship Design for Extreme Affordability. Purdue has engineering projects in community services. Europe has it, India, RUTAC has it, National Innovation Foundation has it, and recently MHRD has started Unnad Bharat Abhiyan at different IITs and centrally funded. So in conclusions, I want to tell you that how robotics knowledge can solve our rural problems. A rock be an innovative teaching methodology which can make our engineering graduates better employable. Mudra, an innovative research which can solve our social problem, hopefully. And finally, I wanted to tell all of our researchers' colleagues that let's take it as a researcher's social responsibility in line with CSR. And in the first day, our Prime Minister also talked about scientific social responsibility as line with CSR. So with this, I wanted to stop here, uh, acknowledging all our uh, family and friends. Thank you very much.